Hey guys, it's Brian Mouse. I run turfmechanic.com and this channel, and today I'm gonna be doing some seed planting. It's not even really today, it's over the course of the next two weeks. I'm gonna plant it today and I'm gonna grow it. What I wanna talk to you about today is mostly applicable to cold season lawn people and people maybe in the transition zone who are considering putting down a perennial ryegrass or a Kentucky bluegrass. I've done a number of seeding videos on uh, tall fescue and fine fescue, uh, like a number of them, comparisons and whatnot, a full tall fescue maintenance plan. Uh, make sure to take a look at those below because those are also cool season, cold season grasses. Uh, the other two main cold season grasses are Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye. If you're thinking about doing a seeding project, whether in the spring or the fall, those are the best times to do it possibly a dormant overseeding. I also have a video on that. But bluegrass and perennial rye is what I'm talking about today. All right, now I am a lawn care YouTuber, obviously. Uh, the other big, a couple of the other big lawn care YouTubers are Ryan Knorr and Pete over at GCI Turf. Both of them have videos about midnight Kentucky bluegrass. Kentucky bluegrass midnight variety. So I went and picked up a midnight bluegrass variety, but I also picked up just a general Kentucky bluegrass bag. Now this is a tiny little bag. This isn't going to cover a lot of square footage, but this is just what was sold at my local department store. Like we're talking Fred Meyer. It's where I buy my milk. Uh, this is a variety. This is a blend of Kentucky bluegrass. For those of you that care, it's Arrowhead, Zinger, and Kelly. Kentucky bluegrass, all in about one third increments. This Kentucky bluegrass is from Outside Pride. I have some other videos of grass seed that I've used from these guys. I'm sure there's a variety of ways of buying from Outside Pride, but I have just bought from them from Amazon. This is 99.15% midnight Kentucky bluegrass from the state of Washington. So because Ryan Noor and Pete over at GCI have good things to say about midnight. I had to throw a mono stand in. Uh, perennial rye, this is grown in Sheridan, Oregon, or it's produced in Sheridan, Oregon. It's just a couple hundred miles away from where I live. This is 100% perennial rye. This is the Lolium multiflorum. Probably should have researched that before I made this video, but I didn't. In any event, this is a perennial rye. I've got some other videos on perennial rye here on the channel. What I'm gonna do for you over the course of the next few weeks is I'm going to plant these things into pots. I'm gonna to try to isolate the most ideal situation possible. So I'm gonna be, since they're in pots, I'm gonna be using a little bit of a potting mix and I'm gonna be mixing it together with the topsoil and then spreading it out. So all three of these pots are going to get the exact same soil. Since they're pots, the soil is not compacted. I'm going to be germinating it here in my garage, which is a stable 60 to 62 degrees at this time of year. This is a heated garage and I'm filming in the middle of the winter, otherwise I'd be outside. After I put the soil in the pots and then after I put the seed on the soil, I'm going to use coconut core I prefer coconut core over peat moss simply because it is a more sustainable product. And you can buy it in little like cubes so it doesn't take up as much space in your garage. I'll be putting a little fine layer of coconut core over the top so as to keep these things moist. And then the way that I like to seed germinate because I also garden, I cover my pots with saran wrap, like dead serious. I cover them with plastic wrap so that all of the moisture stays inside. Now, I don't usually keep that saran wrap on for more than three to four to five days, because depending on the temperature, because eventually you need to get some of that moisture to evaporate off, otherwise fungal growth happens. After about three to four days, I pull the saran wrap off and allow them to germinate. All of these seeds, especially the perennial rye, should germinate very fast. I expect both varieties or both bags of Kentucky bluegrass to germinate a little bit slower than the perennial rye. But the whole point of this video is to compare the germination rate and speed and thickness of the germination of these types of grasses. So whether you're going to be planting grass seed in the spring or the fall or in a dormant seed setting, I want you to see what is to be expected under the best possible scenario. 
let's get at it. This isn't exactly going to be a time lapse, but every few days or so, I'm going to check back in and show you how my pots are doing. I've got a good mixture of potting soil and topsoil. I'd say probably about two thirds of this is potting soil, one third topsoil. So again, this is the most ideal situation. In the real world, we're not planting grass in pots. I understand that. Effectively, this is soil that is not compacted. Uh, there's lots of air pockets. There's lots of uh, means for roots to dig deep and uh, that's what we want in a real lawn. Everything about this scenario is completely artificial, but we do actually get to see real grass growing up in the best possible environment imaginable. So let's go take a look. This right here is my perennial rye. Now you're gonna find link below in the description. Um, I've got over on my website, an entire uh, article about seed spreading, like how much seed you need for you know, different kinds of grass types. I recommend you take a look at that. Uh, in this scenario, I always, like when I do pots, I always sow very heavy simply because I just want to. Like this is not the real world. Um, I don't really care about a little bit of waste in a pot. I just wanna see how the grass grows, when it grows, at what temperature. But if you do care about what uh, you're putting on your lawn and how much, what temperature it is, make sure to go into the description below. So again, here on your right, this will be the heavy sowing of perennial rye. Now I have other perennial rye videos on this channel, which I suggest you take a look at. I'll link to them down below too, or maybe a playlist. This here in the middle is going to be the Kentucky Bluegrass Mixture, department store. Kentucky Bluegrass Mixture, there's nothing particularly special about it. This cost me hardly anything at all. I'm sure salespeople there were happy to see it go because who buys department store grass seed in January? One thing that I have not said on any video prior on this channel is Kentucky Bluegrass Seed is significantly smaller like each grain of seed is significantly smaller than perennial rye or fescue for that matter. So when it comes to pounds per thousand square feet, if you're seeding a lawn, you're gonna need fewer poundage for Kentucky bluegrass because the seed is smaller. Plus once the seed germinates and the plant starts establishing itself, it starts spreading out. Whereas perennial rye and tall fescue, they don't spread. They're a bunch type grass. So that grass clump will get a little bit bigger and thicker. It won't spread on its own. Always tamp your seed down. In a lawn setting, use a lawn tamper. You certainly could get away with using your foot if you're careful, uh, just the bottom of your shoe. Uh, but a lawn tamper makes it a lot easier. This is the mono stand. This is the Midnight Kentucky Bluegrass. This is the stuff that is used in other very popular videos. Uh, this is something I had to go out of my way to buy, um, although it is, or at least it was available on Amazon when I bought it. This is the Midnight variety of Kentucky Bluegrass. This variety I'm gonna be putting here in this pot on the right, similar seeding density. In a normal lawn scenario, you wouldn't be planting this dense. Now I'm gonna take my coconut core. Now, Earlier in the video, I said that I like coconut core because it's uh, more environmentally sound. Uh, that is the case, but it's also, there's also another reason for it. If that doesn't float your boat, it is pH neutral, whereas peat moss is not. So this, I don't know, it just seems like the better choice. It's just slightly harder to use. Anyway, that's a side note. So here I'm going to just put a dusting on top. Right now, all of the soil and all of the pots is pre-moistened. Obviously the seed is not, but this is pre-moistened as well. So I'll cover this over and then I'm going to spritz the whole darn thing with water, cover it up with saran wrap, and then just take pictures of it every day or so for the next couple weeks. As you can see, I've got my perennial rye pretty much fully covered. There's a little bit of seed poking through. There's my department store Kentucky bluegrass mix and my midnight Kentucky bluegrass. I'm going to give them a spritz, cover them up. All right, there we go. This is day zero. I'll see what happens. All 
All right, here we are on day six, perennial rye, right on time has started germinating. Zoom in there. Look at that. It's starting to come up just as expected on day six. The unexpected thing is my KBG blend actually has a couple random sprouts. There's one right there. There's one right there. there. Might be a couple others in there. Like weirdly enough, there's a couple just random ones poking up here. The midnight, I cannot identify a single sprout yet. So uh, we'll keep tracking them. I'm gonna stop doing this probably daily before long and kind of giving you a every now and then update. Perennial rye, as you would expect, is germinating and growing much faster. Look at these two random KVGs here. I wonder what those are. I wonder what that's about. There's a few other small teeny ones in here in this blend. Uh, this one, uh, the midnight KVG, is just coming up. But weird. Take a look at this. The top dressing. It's like bubbling up. The grass isn't going through it. actually grass under there all right today it's what is it january 22nd it's been 16 full days since those pots behind me have been growing this is my daughter i love her hi hi <laughs> so this is what everything looks like these seeds were put down if you recall on the 6th of january perennial rye this has not been trimmed once this is about as high as i want to let it go i'm going to start trimming it today this is the KBG blend. It's looking really good. The last week it's put on a lot of growth. I pulled one of those little like random uh, early sprouts. Where is it? There it is right there. It's dried out here. You can even see the seeds still there. I still don't know what it is. This is the other one. I am convinced that this is not Kentucky bluegrass. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up right now. Just pluck it out. Looks like the root came off. I don't know. Maybe it'll grow back. This is the Midnight Kentucky Bluegrass. At this point, at day 16, I cannot tell the difference between Midnight KBG and the KBG blend. Possibly this one is slightly taller. Slightly, I don't know, maybe quarter of an inch. But we've got pretty even germination rate across the whole thing. Um, I'm liking what I see over here. This is, uh, I honestly, I think this is less thick. Uh, the blades are just taller. That's just what I see. But that might just be because I had more seed put down in the KBGs. Anyway, 16 days. That's what you can ex expect under the best of scenarios. I'm going to continue growing these. And throughout the late winter and all the way through the spring, I'm going to be featuring these in videos here on the channel. I really hope you subscribe. I know this video is a little bit long, and for some of you it might be a little bit dry. But this is a good illustration as to the early growth habits of Kentucky bluegrass versus perennial rye. 16 days, this is what you can expect under the best of circumstances. In your lawn, your mileage may vary. Please hit the like button. Let's see, where's the lighting? Where's the lighting good? Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.